Hello, I'm Jeff Myers, and welcome to Elgin Today. On this edition, Mr. Terrence Miller Allen, a senior at Elgin High School, was named by the Elgin Boys and Girls Club Youth of the Year in ceremonies on February 4th. And new this year, Brianna Brown of Larson School was named Middle School Youth of the Year. They seemed on this night to be born to dance, at least for pads in their annual winter harvest for the homeless, as the City of Elgin's Barb Kiselica and Jason Pulowski of the Elgin Area Chamber made disco the in thing to raise money for a good cause. Mayor David Captain's segment comes from one of the most historic structures in Elgin, the Elgin Observatory and Planetarium at 312 Watt Street. Built in 1909 by the Elgin Watch Factory and a part of the U46 School District since 1963. The mayor's guest is Peggy Hernandez, the planetarium teacher. She sees 150 to 175 students a day. And we travel to a remarkable black and white photo exhibit at the Elgin Art Space Lofts, presented by Elgin's James Harvey. We'll have these stories and more on this edition of Elgin Today. It's Thursday night, February 4th, and these seven youngsters were the candidates for the annual Youth of the Year Award for the Elgin Boys and Girls Club. Before we hear from this year's winner, let's hear from Isaac Reyna, who won last year not only this competition, but the state competition as well. Isaac, then a senior at Elgin High School, enjoyed his time as Youth of the Year. Oh, gosh, it was, it was a wonderful year. It was wonderful, beautiful. I loved it. Tell me some of the things you did. Well, for example, for winning state, um, it was just a great accomplishment being the first one in Elgin to ever win state since it started. So from the beginning, I thought that was a wonderful accomplishment. But with that also, um, I got to travel to Atlanta to meet all the rest of the state youth of the years that um, there is in the United States. You're an Elgin high grad. Yes, I am. And you go to ECC now? Yes, sir. What are your future college plans? My future college plan is to major in business, get my master's in business, from there um, pursue my PhD. Don't know in what just yet, but I know I'm going to get it because um, my Spanish teacher in high school told me only 2 to 3 percent of Hispanic, Hispanics get their PhD, and I want to be a part of that. Tell me what the Boys and Girls Club meant to you. Well, the Boys and Girls Club meant to me everything. Um, the Boys and Girls Club was actually my first home. Growing up, um, growing up without a father and my mother technically abandoning me and my sister out on the street alone, and um, Boys and Girls Club was everything. They taught me how to tie a tie, to how to talk to girls to even um, how to know how to speak in public and dress. These kids are incredible. Just the, the talent and the skill and the leadership and the confidence that they have to be able to get up in front of all of these people and speak is amazing. How exciting is this night for all Boys and Girls Club members? You know, every year, every year <laughs> it gets more and more excitement. <laughs> And like Isaac said tonight, there's kids that are just little, you know, little first graders that understand now what the youth of the year is, and they can't wait until they're old enough to compete. And so it's, it's these amazing role models that they have um, to look up to, and they, they understand what, what it takes to be a youth of the year, and it changes their lives, it changes their behaviors. This year's youth of the year, an Elgin High senior, Terrence Miller Allen. Allen, who was quite the football player for the Elgin Maroons, was a humble winner. I feel awesome. I mean, I feel great right now because I know that I put the hard work in to, for this speech. And, um, I mean, I wasn't expecting to win, but I won. I'm never expecting to win. I always want the best, you know. My partners, like Sharon, I, I thought she was going to win. I really wanted her to win. Um, most of the speeches were about life stories, deep life stories. And mine was about character, persistence, and reaction and sportsmanship and how I became a leader. And to be honest with you, my story does not compare to theirs. But at the end of the day, I know that they're going to be just as happy for me as I would if they won. And hey, we have the reigning state champion, so you, you want to follow that up, don't you? Yeah, I mean, he's actually um, coaching me up you know, a little bit. So um, give me some tips. I mean, I was really nervous coming into the speech today. Um, when I was speaking in front of the judges, um, my throat got really dry and I almost passed out because they asked me a million questions. But Isaac, you know, having him as a coach is great because he taught me, you know, when you think you're going to mess up, stop, take a deep breath, and keep going at it. And um, practice makes perfect. You, you love your Elgin, don't you? Yes, I do. I love the Elgin Maroons. <laughs> I love the city. Um, something great, you know. I, I'm going. I want to go to school for law enforcement, and hopefully, I'll be a cop back here in Elgin. So. Wow. We'll tell Chief Zabota to wait for you. Yeah, I already told him that. I told him my freshman year in high school. <laughs> oh, wow, nice. Well, congratulations, Terry. Thank you. Appreciate it. And speaking of Elgin High School, we talked with someone in the know about Terrence. Very proud. We're really happy with Terrence. 
anyone deserves to be recognized as uh, the Elgin Youth of the Year, it's Terrence Miller Allen. He's a fantastic kid who really brings a lot of spirit to our school. That's great. He had quite a story to tell, didn't he? He does. He's really come a long way. As a freshman, he was a handful. And now he walks through the hallways and he, commands, uh, a pre he has a commanding presence and he's really shaped uh, younger kids and how they kind of act in the hallways now. And something new this year, Brianna Brown was named Middle School Youth of the Year. She attends Larson Middle School. Two familiar Elgin faces dance to help raise funds for PADS, public action to deliver shelter, as part of their 2016 Winter Harvest for the Homeless. Barb Kazelica of the City of Elgin and Jason Palowski of the Elgin Area Chamber brought back disco on this night to the crowd's delight. They sure look great, but how did Jason feel? Terrified. <laughs> it, dancing is not usually my style. If I'm known to perform, it's usually uh, acting or uh, maybe a little karaoke every now and again, but dancing, definitely not my strength. So when I was asked to uh, do this by my lovely dance instructor, Kyla Duell, um, she, she said to me, um, can you find yourself a partner that can make you look good? And I thought, well, there's probably only one person in the world that can actually make me look good as a dancer, and that would be my good friend from the city of Elgin, Barb Kaselica, the special events and uh, community engagement manager for the city. Um, and she was very, very kind enough to accept my offer, and um, we uh, knocked it out of the park, I think. You did. You guys worked hard. Barb was sensational. She really was. I mean, I, I, I thought going into this, like, uh, I had seen Saturday Night Fever and saw Travolta basically had most of the moves in there, and the, the girl was sort of just the backup part. But once we choreographed the routine, I kind of thought, well, gosh, I got it easy. All I got to do is, uh, you know, a couple of, couple of moves and kick my foot over her head, and she's doing all these spins. But uh, she really knocked it out of the park. She, uh, she did great, and there's just nobody in the world I would have rather have done this with than her. So well said. It must give you guys a great feeling to help out like that. Absolutely. PADS is a really vital organization, not just to the Elgin community, but to the community in general. Um, you know, I'm a very, I'm a person that's very uh, uh, big in, inc in inclusivity. Um, and, you know, the homeless situation that happens out there, so many of them are treated as if they're not people. And uh, PADS does a great job in not only, you know, making them feel welcome and, and giving them purpose, but also, you know, to, to taking them in and showing them a path that can actually help them, uh, you know, get back onto the road to success. And uh, the staff and the volunteers at PADS are, are just are just wonderful. And it's a, it's a great organization. And we were very proud to be uh, to help raise money for them. As honorary co-chairs of the event, Elgin Police Chief Jeff Sabota and his lovely wife, Laura, addressed the crowd before the event, they danced to great success in 2011. After this event, they talked about what they saw on this night. It was, a, it was a, such an honor to be asked to be the honorary chair uh, couple for the uh, Stars Dance for Elgin Pad. So it was a lot of fun, and we got to see some fun dancing. We were actually happy to be on the uh, this side of the dance floor this time. Most definitely. <laughs> a lot less stress, but it was so cool to see everybody dance. They did an amazing job, and it was just a great night, a great event to come to. Back to Jason Polowski and his job as Director of Marketing and Special Events for the Elgin Area Chamber. He tells us about an upcoming March event. We have our uh, 12th Annual Oblamos Espanol Expo at the Center of Elgin in the Heritage Ballroom. Uh, it runs from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Heritage Ballroom. Uh, we've got uh, entertainment uh, vendor expo, uh, live music, uh, kids' activities, family activities, educational seminars. And this year we've added a new element to it called the Battle of the mariachi bands where we'll have uh, several area mariachis performing and the people in attendance will get to vote and that band will uh, be our final act of the day on uh, on that Saturday so it's a great event usually we uh, draw hundreds and hundreds of folks so if you're at the center of Elgin on Saturday March 5th we hope you'll come out and see us it's a great community event and we're really excited about it lots of tables from the city of Elgin absolutely we've got 311 we've got the police department fire department uh, we've got uh, several businesses local businesses and nonprofits there and we, there will be bilingual representatives at each table to uh, be able to communicate with our uh, great Hispanic community 
Talk about a very historic spot in the city of Elgin. Mayor, we are there. Jeff, this is uh, one of the most historic structures in the entire city of Elgin. We're at the uh, Observatory and Planetarium, owned by uh, School District U46. Uh, it was built, the uh, observatory portion was built in 1909, it was owned by the watch factory. They used it to uh, calibrate watches. And that was part of the uh, part of the process here. And uh, I graduated from high school in 1965, 1963. U46 took over ownership of this just about at the time that the uh, watch factory closed in the city of Elgin. And with us today is uh, Peggy Hernandez. She's the director down here and the instructor for the planetarium. And we're going to talk a little bit about what this building does and uh, uh, some of the great history that goes with it. So Peggy, if uh, you'd like to start us out, uh, talk about uh, what the this was what what they did here in 1909 up until uh, uh, let's go up to uh, the late 50s, 50s. To the late 50s. Yeah. My dear, you have the best job in town, I think, as well. I have the best of many worlds. I <laughs> see 150 to to 175 kids every day, and then I have the awesome history in this building that I, I do love to share. It opened in 1910, and they would watch stars all night. Uh, carefully as they, they went past the, the telescope upstairs, and then they would do math all day. And they would calculate how much their master clocks were off. Uh, they had some, there are still two ma uh, regulator clocks that are really precise, but they're not perfect because they're man-made. So every day they'll get off a little bit, and they watch the stars all night to essentially recalibrate the clocks every day. So every day, when they had readings, mm -hmm. uh, they were able to adjust the clocks in the master clock room. So they always had the exact time here. They would send it by direct wire right under Raymond Street. The wire's probably still down there, wow. uh, directly to the factory. And the workers in the finish room would, would you know, either study the clocks on the walls or listen to the beeps coming in and make sure that the watches were running correct as soon as they were hot off the press. The they, watches were made and brought yeah, here. If they, were, if they were not, no, they were mostly timed at the factory. Oh, okay. And if they were, if there was a t clock that was not perfect, they opened it up on the spot and put the loop on their eyes and adjusted the mainspring or whatever they needed to fix and until it was perfect, and then they stamped it, time by the stars, to go out to the jeweler. It's a busy show, and the mayor's got a couple questions for you, but really all of modern time, we like to say, originates in Elgin, Illinois. Right. When the Elgin Observatory, well, we always had the exact time, and it became uh, very valuable. People wanted time, and really it was with radio that it was, it exploded where we started sending time uh, all over the country, and uh, many clocks and train stations were calibrated through Elgin Central Standard Time that was sent across the country. Mayor? Uh, Jeff, I think one of the interesting stories goes back to the uh, World's Fair. And uh, what was the role of Elgin in the World's Fair and uh, how they uh, uh, made use of this building and the, and the staff here? To Sally Rand could not have done a thing until we got the queue, is that right? <laughs> 1933, we're talking about that World's Fair. Yeah, it, well, it, it actually goes back to the Columbian ex exhibition, well. ex exhibition in 1893, and the star, giant star Arcturus, uh, released some photons of light then, and that star is 40 light years away. So 40 years later in 1933, when the World's Fair in Chicago was about to open, there was this nifty new little device that had been developed at U of I called a photocell, and it could take light and change it into electricity. So they used that electricity to turn on the lights at the fair. And it was, it was hot, everybody loved it, P the crowd loved it, um, uh, and I, I think it was, Direct, it was U of I that originally did this light switch thing, but but the people at the fair loved how popular it was, so they, they wanted it to be done every night, and Elgin said, we'll do it. They so already, we didn't do opening night, but did every night after that. I think that's, I think that's how it happened. And there, there's still um, equipment actually in the back of the building here that the telescopes sat on during the World's Fair where they did some readings from here, um, and they would, you know, send the information, send the the electrical signal so that they could turn on the lights every night at the World's Fair. And of course they had a kiosk there anyway. You know, they were trying to sell their watches. <laughs> History, Mayor. Uh, Jeff, and I think one of the interesting things is maybe it, uh, uh, we got into the 1960s and the watch factory has started to decline. Up until that time, this, this facility, the, the old portion was staffed by people from employees of the watch factory. And now we've uh, transitioned, in 63 we transitioned, and Peggy, uh, you know, many people don't even, they, they've seen this building, they don't even know what it is. Mm -hmm. right. And this addition was put on. Explain the difference between an observatory and a planetarium. Gladly. 
The observatory is the part of the building you see from the street. It has the dome, it has windows, and there's a telescope inside. It's a transit telescope. It's mounted to the earth. It goes down 60 feet into the concrete to the bedrock. It doesn't turn to look at anything. It just stays put and moves with the earth. A planetarium is a room where a whole bunch of people, day or night, can come and look at the night sky on the ceiling through a projector that's right behind us. And we are in the planetarium room where uh, uh, over a million students through U46 has come, have come and, and looked at the night sky. And this is the room U46 built? Th this Correct. Room. This part of the building that we're standing in, the back part of the building that you can't easily see from the street, uh, was added on by the school district in 1963 after we had uh, been gifted the building from the watch company um, in order to take advantage of, of the exploding uh, education, science, astronomy, Cold War, all that stuff. And this site was chosen because it had a nice gravel base, is that right? Right. It's, it's up a little bit from the river away from the humidity and there's a good gravel base and they were able to dig 60 feet down to get to solid rock so that that base would never shift that wow. the telescope was sitting on. I can hear those council meetings of those oh, days. There we go. And <laughs> Jeff, the, uh, one of the things that we talk about, and that's the purpose of the show, is to talk about what makes Elgin unique. And this makes School District U46 unique in the state of Illinois. There's a, uh, there's a planetarium and observatory at uh, Adler in Chicago. There's one in Lake Geneva. I don't know of any others. Maybe the U of I has one. But yeah. for a local school district to have a facility like this to train and educate the young people in, in, a, in a community is virtually unheard of in the United States. And that's what makes Elgin unique. It's something that uh, we built on. And again, it goes back to the time in the 60s when people had a vision as to this could have all just disappeared. Sure. It could have been bulldozed down or knocked down and uh, mm -hmm. wouldn't have existed. So I think the vision was here and uh, we come to the 1960s and Peggy talk about what you do here what are the, uh, the classes that come in and the young people that go through here are from what grade to what grade when do they really start to appreciate what they're seeing in here honestly I would say from kindergarten when they start I, I see kindergarten through sixth grade on a regular basis um, and some middle school, some high school, some community college. I have scout sessions and I have public evening shows uh, four times a year. And um, I, think, I think they appreciate it at, to some degree at every level. I mean, when they're walking out the door and I hear them all chattering and they're talking about what they just saw, I mean, you know that they were engaged. They, they love it. And I have the beauty of not only this planetarium where I can teach astronomy so effectively, but I have this amazing historical connection to astronomy and to the city of Elgin and, and the watches that they made. So it's the best of it is. I was going to say best of all worlds right there. Back, uh, and back at uh, the time when I was in high school, I graduated in 1965. So uh, U46 had just taken possession of this facility, and Don Tuttle was the first first director. He's a legend. And he, he was. And uh, he was a physics teacher, and I think he uh, was an amateur astronomer, and he just grew with the job. And uh, I think that was uh, what makes it kind of exciting. He uh, enjoyed it all his life. And uh, uh, Peggy, you've been here seven years, is yes. that correct? This is my seventh year here, and, and uh, Don Tuttle was here. Um, he, he was an astronomer, and then he ended up getting his education degree when, when he started here in the school district. And um, he saw over 500,000 kids just himself. So there's many Elginites that remember Mr. Tuttle. Uh, Mr. Kutina then was here for roughly 20 years uh, before I came in about seven years ago. The World's Fair of 39 and 40, don't, in New York, we build a, a mini observatory, don't we? Absolutely, yep. They had a little miniature mock-up of the clock room, um, oh. and they, they brought one of the clocks there. Really? And there's a clock in the clock room right now that has a metal base instead of glass. Because they dropped it? Because they dropped it. We're watching that right now in video. And in 1939, when they brought it back from the World's Fair, the, 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 the standard then was that metal. Yeah. Instead of a glass, it didn't exist anymore. So they couldn't buy a new glass one. Wow. So they went with what uh, you know the regulator clocks were using at the time. I'm getting goosebumps. And uh, Peggy, uh, this is uh, in March. You have a special event coming up, and it's going to be open to the public. So maybe you'd like to talk a little bit about what you're going to do. Right on March 21st, I'm going to have some one of the public evening shows. I have two identical programs: one at 4:30, one at 6:30. Uh, before each show, you can come early and you can walk around the building and you can go up and look at the old telescope and check out the clock room. Um, 
And I also have one coming up in May. And that information is always available on the U46 website. That's great. Mayor, that's wonderful. Jeff, uh, just to close, you know, this uh, facility was built in 1909. was the last year the Cubs won the World Series. And I'm predicting well, they were the reigning that, champs the, that year. the stars are aligning. And this is going to be the year for the Cubs to uh, win the World Series. Right. As a lifelong Cub fan, we better hurry. Before spring training, there's a prediction right there. Nice there we go. <laughs> that would make sense, wouldn't it? Yes, go Cubs. All right, we got the, we got the whole uh, ionosphere with us. And we sure do. Jeff, uh, we'll look forward to seeing you next month. Thank you, Peggy. You're welcome. Very historic here. Yes, awesome. That's our segment with Mayor David Captain. Let's go to the Elgin Art Space Lofts on 51 South Spring Street for a photo exhibit that took place in the month of February from the works of well-known Elgin photographer James Harvey. Amongst those seeing these black and white photos taken from 1977 to 79 of major musical performers was an Elgin City Council member who enjoyed the night. I'm so happy to be here this evening. Um, Elgin has so much to offer in, in terms of art, all sorts of art and, and uh, visual arts in particular here at Art Space, but many other kinds. And James Harvey is one of our Elgin's greats. And um, I was pleased to be here tonight and see everyone else that's um, come out this evening and um, to and, and celebrate arts. Art Space has been such a great success for downtown Elgin. It certainly has been a great success. And I think it it's not only for um, the people that live here, but the people that can come here and utilize the space for you know a variety of reasons. And um, it's open to everyone in the town. It's our, it belongs to all of us, which is a great thing. It is great. We're like uh, we're like a big city. It's Saturday night, and we're here taking in art. I know, taking in art. That's what I, I uh, Facebook my daughter at college and said I'm off to an art opening, and she said, "Wow, that sounds cool." <laughs> Elgin, Illinois. <laughs> this is this is cool concerts, 1977, 1979, and we got Mr. Eric Clapton, we got Mr. BB King playing the blues, and. We got Mr. George Benson, and, and uh, these, these are just some great, great performers. And you can look here at B.B. King and, and look at the, the, the expression, and he's singing the blues. And Mr. Eric Clapton, one of the world's greatest, just, just a great guitarist. And we got Mr. George Benson, and, um, you know, that's, this is another function of Elgin Art Space Laws. We got photographs. We have art on the wall. Mr. Harvey would tell us he took these photos while in the military and stationed in West Germany. While I was there, sometimes I would get maybe three days leave or four days leave or a couple of days I would jump on the train, maybe go to Paris or maybe go to France or go to Spain. And that's how I got these shots. There certainly seems to be an extra hop in the walk of Elgin's great community leader, Chef Jeff Turner. As in February, he played host to the annual Have a Heart Community Dinner, which is open to all of Elgin. It's a great event. We do it every year. It energizes me. Uh, we get people from all walks of life. Uh, you may make $150,000 a year. You may not make anything. It's a way to get together, have fellowship, meet your fellow citizens of Elgin. It's just a great event. We have great volunteers. Every year we get uh, great volunteers from Edgewater, uh, Community, Del Webb, uh, from the Elgin area. We just have a great surplus of volunteers. It's fantastic every year. Speaking of volunteers helping out over the years, from the Elgin Fire Department, Lieutenant Bob Bedard, here seen in 2013 with Chief John Fahey. Lieutenant Bob would tell us this. It's a wonderful time to pull this community together in a great way, a wonderful way to give and to receive. It's Something that's typically uh, in the past has been hosted by, by Jeff Turner and Anthony Padot. This year, unfortunately, Anthony can't be with us. Anthony, we wish you the best of luck and can't wait to see you back uh, helping host us in the years to come. Wonderful food, having some spaghetti. It's very cold, so that's uh, sticking to the ribs and feeling good. Looking forward to having a plate myself. Another volunteer on this day, the Hemmings Cultural Center's director, Butch Wilhelmy, who told us about an exciting ribbon cutting that took place recently at Hemmings. Yes, we did. We had the ribbon cutting for the Fox Valley Arts Hall of Fame. Uh, this is a Hall of Fame that's been at the Paramount Center in Aurora, and it's just recently moved to the lobby of the Hemmings, and we had the official grand opening on the 30th. Yeah, there are several uh, that have Elgin ties. Uh, Bob Hansen from the Elgin Symphony Orchestra is uh, on the wall right now, and we've got some new ones from Elgin coming in with the class of 2016 as well. And Butch would remind us that Margaret Hillis, the Elgin Symphony Orchestra music director from 71 to 85, and the internationally known Elgin photographer Sandro Miller will be added to the Hall M this wall later this year. And our lobby is open from 10 till 4, Monday through Thursday, and also obviously during all the different events that we have, so people can come in 
and there it's on the north side of the lobby. You can just come in and, and take a look at all the, the different people that are there. And Butch would remind us just how this great Hall of Fame came to call Hemmings Cultural Center home. It was just something that uh, they were looking to relocate and Mayor Captain met with them and uh, they thought that the Hemmings would be a really good spot to move it to and uh, I think that's correct. At the Paramount, from my understanding, it was in an area where it wasn't open to the public, it was open to people who were ticket holders. So in order to see the uh, Hall of Fame, you actually had to be there for another show. Whereas with us, it's in the lobby, so it's uh, available all the time. One of my most proud moments for my time here in Elgin was being the recipient of two Elgin Image Awards on March 7, 2002. One for a radio show and one for cable television work. Now, this upcoming Thursday, March 17th, the 24th Annual Elgin Image Awards will take place at the Heritage Ballroom and the Center of Elgin. Everything gets underway with a social hour at 6 o'clock and the award presentations begin at 7. As we take a look at this great list of nominations in alphabetical order, we'll remind you that this list comes from you, the people of Elgin. Now, Elgin's Image Advisory Commission takes great pride in recognizing each of the nominees. Each nominee, whether as an individual, group, or organization, has impacted the image of Elgin in a unique and meaningful way. On this night, from this list, Elgin Image Awards will be rewarded. Again, it'll take place on Thursday, March 17th, and all taking place at the Heritage Ballroom and the Center of Elgin. It's always a great night. So we'll see you there for the 24th Annual Elgin Image Awards. We just told you about the Elgin Image Awards upcoming here at the Heritage Ballroom on March 17th. And lo and behold, our final story this month of March, it's February 23rd. Chief Jeff Sabota is with us, and we are at the Heritage Ballroom, aren't we, Chief? We sure are here at the center at the Heritage Ballroom, and uh, it's a big night for the police department. Now, this is the first time you're, you're having your, your gala event. Usually it's daytime. Often it was at the police facility. I think last year you moved here in the daytime here, but now you're prime time, aren't you? We're going prime time. It's become such a large event. We get so much support from the community, um, the officers and the civilians and the business owners that were we're given the awards to. Uh, they all came out, they're bringing their family. This really has become a community event versus an event that used to be just held in the police department for the police officers and the civilians who work there. Now we're making it more of a community event, so we're very proud of it. And Chief, certainly all the community showing up. We see it right now. Oh yeah, it's a packed house already, so uh, yeah, it's going to be a fun night, a lot of great awards. Again, just recognizing the, the great work that goes on day in and day out at the police department by the officers who go out there every day and uh, protect us, protect this community. And uh, that there's many people behind the scenes as well, not just the officers that are out there. And so civilians who are getting awards, dispatchers, just a lot of great work throughout the entire police department. All right, LG Police Chief Jeff Sabota in prime time at the Heritage Ballroom. Have a good night. Thanks for, thanks for having me here, and uh, hopefully we'll see you inside. Some of the awards in front of the packed house included Sergeant Jim Lally, Manager of the Year. He's in charge of the SWAT team. Detective Scott St. John was Officer of the Year, and Brad Duffy was Rookie of the Year. Officer Duffy talked with us after the event and talked about his community involvement. I did the best I could. I'm on midnight patrol, so it's hard to get up and change my schedule over, but I did. I was able to make it out a couple things for Cop on Top with Dunkin' Donuts and cleaning up a park that down off Wing Street. So. And, and where did you go to high school? I went to Larkin High School, yeah. yeah. Congratulations. When did you graduate? I graduated in 2004. We're so proud of you then. Yeah, thank you. you tell us some good memories about Larkin High School. Oh, there's a lot of them. I love thoroughly enjoyed the football game so oh well, you had yeah. a great run huh? you had great times with that yeah yes i did and with such a successful community event Chief Jeff Sabota had these final words on the night for us. You look at policing, what I always tell all your residents is that you look around policing, policing you know, nationally does need to change. You know, There are a lot of things that we can do better as policing, but I can tell you, day in and day out, the Elgin Police Department does it right. And we do it right because we do it with the community, we work together, and we know we can't be successful without them. So I always talk about policing and say you know, we need to do a better job nationally, but the way we're doing it right is the way we're doing it here in Elgin. You can learn more about the information you saw here in Elgin today or about city services, programs, and events by going to the Elgin website at www.cityofelgin.org. And now the City of Elgin has a 311 contact center. Elgin 311. Call, click, connect by calling 311, the city's information and request resource. For everyone here at Elgin Today, I'm Jeff Myers. We'll see you next time.